In this video, we'll calculate the beta of a single security using Excel. Then we'll calculate the weighted average beta of a hypothetical portfolio of securities. By the end of the video, you'll have a basic understanding of how to calculate and use beta as an estimator of systematic risk. You'll also understand some of the ups and downs of using this measure. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. What is beta? Beta is an estimate of the price sensitivity of a single asset to that asset's benchmark risk. This benchmark risk is the market risk, or the systematic risk. Beta is used in the Capital Asset Pricing Model, or CAPM. CAPM is a method of estimating the appropriate risk-adjusted expected return of an asset. It was developed in the 1960s, but it's still widely accepted as a method of valuation. Using CAPM to find an estimated return leads the CAPM user to proper valuation of a security. When it comes to calculating beta, the user must decide what the market is. For a single bond, the market may be the total bond market. For a single stock, the market may be the index from which that stock is a member. Market risk or market beta is always set at a beta of 1.0. A security determined to have a beta of 2 would have twice the volatility or twice the risk of the overall market it belongs to. If the market was up 1% during a particular period, you would reasonably expect the security to be up 2% during that same period due to systematic risk. A security with a beta of 1 would have the same systematic risk as the market. If the market was down 1% during this period, you would expect this security to be down 1% as well. A security with a beta of 0.5 would be correlated with the market, but only mildly. This security would be less sensitive than the overall market. If the market was up 1%, you would expect this security to be up half a percent. A security with a beta of 0 is uncorrelated to the market, and we can't tell which way this security will move in relation to the market's move. Negative betas are possible. A security with a beta of negative 0.5 would be mildly negatively correlated with the market. If the market was down 1%, we would expect this security to be up half a percent. A security with a beta of negative 1 has a perfect negative correlation with the market. Before we calculate the beta of our security, let's talk about a few limitations of this measure. Beta is based on the historical behavior of both the security and the market, and history is not the future. Beta needs to be revisited periodically and updated. Beta captures systematic risk, but not unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk is risk to the particular security. Things such as management launching a product that flops and destroys revenues at a single company. These types of risks are not predicted by beta. As mentioned previously, beta looks only in the rearview mirror. It's based on history, and this makes it not so great as a long-term predictor of where a security will trade. The volatility of both the single security as well as the market can change over time. For our security, I'm going to choose Apple Computer, common stock, traded on the NASDAQ. This is probably one of the widest held securities in the world. And if you go to their summary page, you do actually see a five-year monthly beta calculation at 1.31, and that also appears on the statistics page. Let's download some historical data of Apple and plug it into our spreadsheet. If you go to historical data for Apple, you can pull up the last year's worth of daily closes, highs, lows, etc. And if you hit this download button, you get to a file that looks like this. This is Apple's data. Next to it, I'm going to put the data for my market. 
Now, this is kind of important to consider. I'm going to factor dividends into this calculation because dividends impact price sensitivity. If you have a $10 stock that pays a $1 dividend, on the exclusion date, that stock will drop to exactly $9 in the absence of other news and influence. So it is ludicrous to think that dividends don't influence stock prices. So I'm going to use the adjusted close column for my Apple shares. And I want an ETF that tracks the market. And the market's going to be the S&P 500, of which Apple is a member. The S&P 500 index data on Yahoo does not include dividends because the adjusted close is the same as the close all the way down the line. So I'm going to have to use an exchange traded fund that closely tracks the S&P 500 instead. For my S&P 500 index tracking ETF, I've chosen the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust, symbol SPY. And I went ahead and put their data in next to my Apple computer company data. And you can tell that dividends are in play with both of these because the close and the adjusted close are slightly different for Apple and a little bit different for SPY as well. And, and another thing I would do is make sure your dates match up all the way down the line just to make sure of your good data integrity. Now I'm going to start getting rid of columns, but before I do that, I'm going to relabel this with the ETF symbol, and I'm going to relabel this column with Apple's symbol. And then I'm going to get rid of every other column on here, except for the date. I'll keep one of my date columns. So from this, we need to calculate returns daily returns for each of these securities. And I'm going to put those over here and we have to go down one line to do that. So that'll be this closing price minus this closing price divided by this closing price. And we'll format that uh, to three decimal places. And we can copy that over. and autofill that down. Now we have a list of daily returns of each, the security and the, the market. So I added some column headers to keep this organized. And one of the first things you wanna do is go down this column and copy everything and paste as values. We don't want any formulas in those cells. So I've taken out the formulas. The next thing you want to do, and you have to do this individually, is go down one column. You actually don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this for the sake of illustrating what, what we're actually doing here. I'm going to sort this column and it'll see Excel thinks I'm making a mistake because I'm only highlighting one column, but yes, I want to continue with that. And I want to sort those from small to big. And then just repeat that with the other one. So I've got my two sets of daily returns. And I went down and counted. There's 253 daily returns in each set of data. So what we're going to do to find the beta of Apple versus the S&P 500 is put these on a chart, essentially using the slope function. It'll do it this behind the scenes, but we're going to actually put them on a chart and compare the slope of the two linear regressions. So for the sake of illustration, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this data and insert a scatter plot. Okay, I don't need this chart title right now. I probably should have done the market first, but we'll go ahead with this. 
I'm going to format this axis a little bit. Since I know I have 253 data points, I'm going to just set my max at 253. So those are my daily returns for the Apple shares. And you can see on a, the worst possible day during this one year trailing 12 month period was it was down 12.9% best day of all was up 12% and everything else in between. Let's put the other series on there. And by the way, I'm going to edit series one to give it a name. And I'm going to add my series two and give it a name. You only enter the Y values on this. So let's scroll up and see what that looks like. So in orange, we have the market and in blue, we have Apple shares. So I rearranged my screen a little bit here to make as much use of my space as I can. This orange line, remember, is the S&P 500. The blue line is Apple. And uh, we've got 253 data points from left to right for both of them, ranging uh, this span of returns. What we to, to illustrate what this is all about, I'm going to put in a trend line for both of these. So there's my Apple trend line. And then we'll add an orange trend line. These are both linear trend lines. Let's get this out of the way. And that is the best illustration I can come up with of what beta actually is. So if you notice this blue trend line for Apple is steeper than the trend line for the overall market, which is shallower. So this tells me that Apple is more sensitive to the market and has a beta of greater than 1.0. I just did this for illustration purposes because visually you can see if if going from here on the vertical axis to here is one. Yeah, it looks like the Apple beta would probably be about 1.3. So let's see how it turns out using the slope function. I'll use these two cells to plug in my beta values and I want to do the market one first. This should come out to 1.0. So let's plug in our slope function there. Known Y's and known X's. Well, these are actually the same. I'm going to go down my column here. Those are my known Y's and my known X's are the same. Now, why did I bother to do that and come up with exactly one because I'm going to make this something I can paste into my Apple column. And I just wanted to make sure the slope function is working correctly. So we can paste this right over here. And you can see that that cell is looking at both columns. So it's comparing known X's in column E, which is the market, to known Y's from column D. Let's get rid of that. And I came up with an answer of 1.35, which is pretty close to Yahoo's 1.31. The difference is that my beta for Apple was calculated based on daily closing returns over one year, and theirs is based on monthly closing returns over five years. So there's a little variation there. The last thing I want to do in this video is talk about a hypothetical portfolio. I think it is very worthwhile for investors who pick securities or even ETFs 
to compute the weighted average beta of their investment portfolio. So here I have a, a, a hypothetical portfolio of five securities, well-known names. These are the number of shares I bought. These are the closing prices today. So this is the market value today. And I looked up the beta for each one of these. So how do you do this? Well, we need a multiplier and that multiplier will be the market value today divided by this total value. And I'm gonna fix that reference. And to calculate the weighted component from Amazon, you just multiply this multiplier times the beta. So if I paste these all the way down, I can see that this portfolio of securities is very close to the market. It's 0.96, just a, the systematic risk built into this portfolio is just slightly under the systematic risk of the market. As I said, I think this is a very worthwhile exercise for most investors. So they aren't surprised at the way their investment portfolio reacts to major movements in the market. There are probably a lot of investors out there who have a weighted average beta of their investment portfolio that's a lot higher than they're aware of. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit my subscribe button. I'll be releasing one video a week for the foreseeable future on various topics in investing, accounting, and just general how-to topics related to Excel. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.